Awesome. Um, well, thanks. Um, welcome. Um, we, uh, I'm Chris Powers. Uh, that is Augusto and Ross, and we are contributors to DXDAO. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, governance structures, um, and so DXDAO is kind of a fully on-chain organization, so everything we're going to be talking about is how we coordinate through different voting mechanisms kind of on-chain on here. Um, so can we start with the, the next, the first slide here? Um, so I think everyone over the last year has uh, realized what, what many people have known for, for a while is that DAOs really are a breakthrough uh, technology around coordination. Um, and they give us new tools to, to do that. Um, but what we haven't yet seen really are new models or systems to fully take advantage of those tools. And I think you see this a lot throughout like technology and history, um, which is that like once you have a new technological tool, say like the factory, you have the ability um, to produce things. You don't actually see the model or system for gov or for um, maximizing that productivity for several years because it takes a while for people to really realize what those tools are. You know, the same thing, obviously, like once you have the smartphone and GPS, um, then you can create new uh, relationships with customers like as, as Uber did. Um, so I think everything we've seen so far with DAOs, we're still like in the very, very basic tooling phase and we haven't really seen like, well, what are the new ways we can coordinate new systems that are actually like, you know, doing something new. Um, so before we get into what the stuff is new, let's start with what we've kind of done in Ethereum. So can we go to the, the next slide here? Um, so these are just some, some early kind of governance structures, innovations in Ethereum uh, over the last, um, you know, five or six years. Obviously, you know, everything with, with DAOs go back to uh, the DAO and uh, the DAO hack there. Um, and that really, again, was something that uh, uh, it, it, I think maybe is underrated how much that, you know, took control over... Oh, took control over the Ethereum community. I think it was something like 25% of ETH locked. It really you know, showed the promise and, and power of DAOs early on, obviously, um, led to a very uh, fall. Um, MakerDAO um, has been voting uh, on interest rates now, for, I think for on for three years. Um, they've been managing uh, that stablecoin DAI that way. Uh, there's other innovations like Mullik DAO, um, which, uh, in a, which innovated with the, the rage quit, and it was intended to be able to fund public goods uh, around Ethereum. Um, and then starting in, in 2020, you see uh, the governance token revolution, right? Starting with Compound first, um, the ability, you know, with giving uh, tokens out to users to govern the protocol. Um, YFI is another example of this and really innovating on the, the distribution front. And then of course, over the last year, we've seen a plethora of DAOs pop up um, similarly, all focused on like these, these like kind of token-based governance. Um, so uh, if we go to the next slide, we can see um, all of these forms of, of, of innovation that we can see, they all rely on capital for governance, right? When we're determining out who has the say in the DAO, who is ultimately making decisions, it's about who has the most tokens, right? And oftentimes with different projects, this is the projects, the investors, the VCs that launch the, the, the projects themselves, they're the ones that actually have the tokens. Um, this has created a lot of problems that you've seen with, with token voting. Um, obviously, you know, governance can be bought and sold. Um, most uh, token holders, a lot of them will be speculators and not actually that interested in voting and governing on chain. Um, uh, if you have a token and you're voting uh, on, on what to do with that token, uh, presumably governance will very quickly uh, go towards just trying to uh, pump up the price of that token. Um, so you need kind of, uh, there's all these problems, I think, inherent with token-based governance that we're, we're starting to see. Um, but this, this is kind of almost all of the governance you see on Ethereum now is this token-based governance. Uh, next slide, we can talk about what is different. Um, and so DXDAO, which we'll get to in a second, uses uh, reputation, which is uh, non-transferable governance. So as opposed to say like the comp token, which you can buy and sell or send and receive to another address, uh, reputation is non-transferable and associated with a specific Ethereum address. Um, so in essence, this means it can't be uh, bought and sold, so there's not, a, not there's not a market for it. Um, so this is what DXDAO does. Uh, it's a really, uh, I think, we think innovative model of being able to grow the pie of governance, right, by inflating and bringing in new governance um, entities, stakeholders, without diluting uh, those in capital. Um, so how does DXDAO kind of use this and function? So we go to the next slide, and then maybe Augusta, you can talk about how uh, DXDAO uses reputation uh, to govern, and what are we actually governing? so far yeah well since uh since you said we started operating since may 2019 
I joined the Exile in 2020, I think, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm losing track right now. Uh, we've been involved in so many stuff. For example, Swapper uh, is a fork of the Uniswap protocol where we as a governance layer over it. Omen is a market, is a market prediction platform. Carrot is a conditional token uh, framework that we are actually right now um, developing. And we are 15 full-time contributors. We are managing a huge treasury. And also one of the hardest uh, things to do is managing this protocol and products. First, you need to build them. And we have very strong guidelines and, and requirements on how we are building stuff. It has to be 100% decentralized, hosting on, a, on, a, on IPFS. We don't have to rely on any centralized service. So I, I'm involved in, uh, in the technical development of, of these applications. And it is very hard. But it doesn't, it doesn't end up there, because when you do it, you have to give it to the DAO. You have to communicate the product to the DAO, explain uh, how to use it, what they, what they can do, how, how they can govern this. And that's, again, that's another step, and then govern the entire product. Yeah, and, and um, you know, one of the important things with DeekStow is that the contributors or the people that are um, you know, building uh, the products are also participating in governance. And so, Ross, I'm kind of interested, you know, as you, as you kind of came on and started working for DeekStow, uh, maybe you could kind of talk about that experience and then how you were like, not just like working and building and shipping products, but then like voting on chain as part of like, you know, being being a part of DXDAO. Yeah, so I mean, as Chris mentioned, like the being part of DXDAO and a contributor, it's not just uh, like doing your tasks and developing stuff or all the squads we have. It's not just that, it's, it's also voting. I mean, the DAO is only made up of contributors and because we we have reputation, uh, it's kind of on the, on the contributors to actually govern and it's, it actually takes up a, a good chunk of time. <laughs> like literally sure. just, yeah. I, I voted, like Ross has a worker proposal out right now. I think that it would like pass in like six hours um, and I voted for it. You can look for it or my company can't afford it. Um, so it really is this kind of like active participation, um, which I think is a pretty sharp contrast to some of like the large, you know, anonymous token based communities, which you'll have like snapshotting and then like there's like a team labs team like somewhere that's not really like responsive like here you have that with the reputation system you have like kind of that ability to integrate those two um so can we go to the next slide here yeah and so um what i think has happened in the last kind of five six years in terms of governance on ethereum and, and DAOs um, is you have seen the creation of these new governance primitives right these new tools um, and I think what you, they're very clearly two big ones. Um, one is token-based governance, um, and the other is reputation-based governance. And so these are primitives that DXDAO uses. We also have a token, a DXD token that we use uh, as, a, as a liquid financial value for, for, for DXDAO. Um, and so um, we see those as the basic primitives. Um, and so now we've, you know, we started working on how, well, with those primitives, what are the new systems or models that we can, we can have? So. We came up with um, the next slide you can see um, is a governance 2.0, which is this idea of combining uh, liquid and non-transferable governance um, into a single um, uh, kind of a, a voting power and a single entity. Um, we think this is like the way to align uh, the long-term interests. Um, both also have a stake in, uh, you know, make sure that there's a um, skin in the game for those uh, participating in governance. Also a good way to onboard uh, new contributors and give them a say in governance. So this is something we've been working with and maybe the next slide, um, uh, Ross and Augusto can, can tell us a little bit about what exactly this is, maybe go to the next slide. This is a pretty slide though, so it's okay for, there we go. Yeah, so um, I guess maybe just a quick, like recap on, on what Governance 2.0 is and, and why we arrived at it, because we've been doing reputation, non-transferable voting now for what, coming up on three years. Um, and I think overall we've had a pretty good experience with it. Uh, it's been going well and it's, it's been doing a lot of good, but we, we've had a, a few issues along the road there as well. And so that's kind of where personally, as a, not personally, like as, as a DAO, we, uh, we found those issues and we, we came up with some solutions that uh, sort of address those. Um, and the main one that Governance 2.0 addresses is that like we, we have this token 
uh, as well as the reputation that doesn't really, there's nothing tying that together with the, the people that are invested and invested in DXDAO financially, there's nothing tying them to, to actual governance, which as we already established is kind of a, a good thing uh, in some ways because it, it has all the benefits of the, the reputation voting, but um, it, if we could have a bit of both, then that's kind of the, the best world and that's what Governance 2.0 is, is bringing to the table. Yeah, and I think um, we think it's awesome for Deke's DAO, and that's why we're like building it. But we also think this is kind of the model for all DAOs, maybe going forward. You know, we're coming at it from the reputation side, where we want to introduce token governance. But I think other communities maybe will come at it from the other ways. And I think you already see this with a lot of like you know the certain governance systems. Obviously, Curve being the the most famous example, which locking up a token for four years is, is very similar to non-transferable uh, governance. So I think you'll see more models um, on that. Um, so how does this um, work? Maybe for the next slide, Augusto, yeah. Well, proposals are, are, are passed um, depending on the voting power. Uh, this is something that we discussed uh, just before, the, just before the, uh, the presentation. Voting power, was it a good name? Uh, and I think it is because you have reputation and you have capital, right? So you have your reputation and you have your, your capital power or, or, or the capital that you hold that the DAO is managing or that you had a, a financial interest on it. And that combines give you the voting power in this governance 2.0 where one of the things that we also want to address is how we can you be integrated into the DAO? Because right now, most of the new people that are joining the DAO, they are just contributors, right? So what is, you don't want to be a full-time contributor, which again, which again, belonging to the DAO, being a contributor is, is hard. If you wanna contribute and you get caught by this DAO dream, uh, you get caught up on it and it consumes a lot of time uh, and, and energy. You get some sweet so, swag. Uh, <laughs> actually, Jerseys. so it's, um, it's, it's very it's very hard. It consumes time. So an easy way to get uh, involved in the DAO will be to just buy some DXZ, start collaborating, communicating on, on the forum, and that hopefully is going to bring more people and it's going to uh, make our our organization bigger. Um, well, yeah, ensures so long-term alignment between the capital and the and the organization interest. We have a manifesto. We have a manifesto. We have contributor uh, guidelines. I think the manifesto is is awesome. I was uh, well. I think we wrote it together with with Chris and other contributors like two years ago. Uh, you should go and, and check it out. So that is what the reputation holders are pursuing. And then you have the uh, the DXC holder that has a financial interest in the DAO. So the idea is to combine them. Yeah. And you actually see this, I think, with other DAOs where like they're trying to like the sub DAO idea, which is like you do have different communities, but at the end of the day, it's like how do those different communities like ultimately interact? And I think like looking at the distribution of like actual power is is, is the ultimate uh, decider. Um, so uh, next slide. Yeah. So maybe talk about some of the technical challenges to implementing uh, governance 2.0 that we're facing, uh, you know, with Deke's DAO in doing this. Um, yeah, the biggest challenge right now has been cross-chain communication. Uh, I can get more into details here, but it's, it's pretty technical. Off-chain voting, we are trying to make uh, voting as cheaper and as easy for voters as possible because when you enter to the DAO and, and you see all the things that we are doing, the reputation, the XE, uh, how all works, it's gonna be kind of it's gonna be very over, overwhelming for the for a new user. Uh, and then conviction voting, this is something I'm super interested in, uh, eager to start working on it uh, very soon. I think it is going to be a great tool and something that we want to start experimenting with on the gears. So if you can go to the next slide, I think, oh, next slide for the DXL. For the uh, we have an image, right? Like, yeah, uh, not here. Okay, it's not here. But something very cool that we are experimenting that, that we are going to be implementing soon is something called ERC20 gears, which are uh, mi like mini DAOs, like uh, mini or organizations. It can be, it can replace even a multi-signature where you have this uh, liquid token governance and then you have DXVote, our other stack or our legacy stack with reputation token. And the idea will be to merge them, right? And it's going to uh, be transformed to governance 2.0. So. What's happened if you are a new uh, a, a company or an organization that wants to start using what we have? We we 
been asked this question. Hey, I want to I want to do what you guys are doing with the expo. It's a long way because you need the reputation token, you need your you need your liquid token, right? So we are designing a path for it. Let's uh, after this talk, if you are interested about it, just contact us. Yeah, and it just as you said, it's a long way. I think that you know. DXDAO's approach, um, I think, to, to a lot of things you can see here with the governance 2.0 model um, is to both simultaneously be building new governance primitives, right? So like pioneering the reputation, use reputation and governance, talking about like token-based governance, like those are all um, new tools, um, but then also looking at like the models and the systems that can like best leverage those tools. Um, so you can't really build the models and systems until you have the tools. Um, so it's kind of like a back and forth um, conversation that, that, that we have with ourselves, right? And kind of like building these tools uh, and models and having, uh, you know, iterating on them and continuing. Um, so um, I think the, Countdown is is going. I don't know how uh, risk that is, but I don't know if there's anything else you guys want to do before closing off uh, today for governance 2.0 and other exciting things at DXDAO. Yeah, I think if you're if you're interested in in learning more about it, there's there's a lot going on. We've only, I mean, the idea's been around for quite a long time. Uh, we've only recently really started like uh, putting plans into action and, and getting everything sorted. And there's a lot of exciting things coming down the road. Um, and I think we're thinking about it from a lot of different angles, not just um, not just DXDAO improving their own governance, but also opening that up for different roadways. Like, as you said, people coming in from having a liquid token, people coming in from having nothing, and there's a lot of power in the uh, in the governance 2.0 formula and just how it works. And, and we're like totally open source and like radically decentralized. So like definitely come oh, yeah, to yeah. and all that. So. Yeah, op open source for the win. I mean, that's the way to go. Uh, so if you are interested in, in what we are doing, everything is open source. Come, forecast, collaborate with us, uh, look for us later. If you want to build cool, uh, cool, D, uh, cool, <laughs> cool DAO tools, we are doing that. Uh, we want to work with you. So yeah. Sweet. All right. Well, thank you very much uh, and happy Dow Denver. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much.